What's up YouTube? It's Jarrett with Bluegrass State RC. Got a technical video today for you. Uh, I've got a FreeSky X20S transmitter that a local club member had dropped and as a result bent a couple of the long switches on the front here. Uh, thankfully, FreeSky offers a flat switch upgrade package for these transmitters. So I know some of the newer ones probably come with the flat switches already, but if you got an earlier model and you prefer to have the flat versus the round style switch, uh, this video could be for you. Obviously, do this at your own risk. There is uh, sensitive electronics and some soldering involved. So, but this video will be a little bit of a guide if you decide to do so uh, on how to, you know, disassemble and get to the point where you can actually replace these switches. So, first things first, of course, if you've got these side covers, these will pop off fairly easy. If they haven't removed the adhesive backing, they still come off pretty easy, regardless. So once you get those removed, uh, go ahead and grab your gimbal protectors that came in the original case. And we're going to put those on, flip the transmitter over. And that just keeps all the pressure from being on your gimbals there. I'm going to turn it around here. Obviously, battery cover. You need to remove that. Uh, let's see here. We're going to very easily get the battery out of the way. So instead of tugging on the wires here, uh, I found it to be a lot easier. Just get a flathead screwdriver right on that tang and you can just easily pry like that without risking pulling the wires out of the connector. So that works out great like that. Uh, you can leave these covers on. You, these are not required to remove. Some people do prefer to remove the sliders as well, but I've found that's not totally necessary. Obviously, you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver and you've only got four screws that hold the shell of this together. Okay, so once you get the four Phillips head screws, one located here, 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 and here, once you get those completely loosened, you can start to remove the back. Now be cautious when doing this because the 900 megahertz antenna has a wire uh, going to the board that is fairly brittle, so you don't really want to tug on that. Be careful not to grab the antenna and use that to pull either. Uh, just kind of pry around and it will come loose. Uh, you can make it a little bit easier by popping the sliders off. Uh, I have found that it's not totally necessary to do that. So once your back starts coming off, you can kind of just push those as such out of the back plate. All right. Now, if you was going to adjust gimbals, you can actually rotate the back cover 90 degrees uh, to gain access but we're gonna need this to be completely removed. So if you look very carefully, it may be hard to pick up in the video, but your 900 antenna attaches right here and it does have a little bit of glue from the factory to ensure that that don't pop off. So we're just gonna get under that very gently with the appropriate tool. A little flat bladed screwdriver works just fine for this job. We're gonna pop that sucker loose and get this completely out of our way. I have found that it is very, very, very difficult to try and do this with that antenna attached. So it's disconnected now. The only thing that's holding it is actually the factory glue. Once again, you want to be very careful with that antenna. All right, going to give you a little bit better shot here. This is the 900 megahertz antenna uh, that I was telling you about that you got to be very cautious with. Uh, we will re remove it for this job. Uh, just to adjust your gimbals and stuff, it's not really necessary to remove it. You can just turn the case 90 degrees and gain access to it. Uh, we've got the two sliders that were on the side here. I like to just kind of pick them up out of the case and get them out of the way. Um, prefer to work on one side at a time. That way you can kind of keep track. These switches, not only are they wired a specific way but they're also oriented with these plastic keepers that I'll show you here in a little bit as well so uh, so again like I said the orientation of the switches is fairly important you can switch it software later on if you did accidentally mix one up but the way some of these plastic keepers are uh, especially in this switches case uh, needs to go a specific way so this needs to go towards the back of the radio uh, as I was sitting here looking at it, I kind of saw something interesting. So on the left side of the transmitter here, all the wires are towards the inside. So that's one way you could keep orientation. So this gear switch, all the wire connections are towards the inside of the radio. Um, on this side, uh, 
it looks like we have a couple, let's see here. This long switch is towards the outside and the rest are towards the inside. So really, uh, you can keep orientation just by that. The right hand momentary long switch, uh, the wires go outside. The rest all go towards the inside of the radio. So that's just a quick way to keep orientation for these uh, so that you don't mix it up and have to go back and reprogram it and have the shells not fit correctly or what have you. So getting these switches out... Um, it's really, I've found easier to just go ahead and remove one side completely. That way you can gain access to all of them. The wiring, the way it's tucked, if you start putting new switches here one at a time, you're going to find that you're going to have to keep them all out anyway to get them back in. So it's just easier to remove them all and just keep up with the orientation. Another thing, the white wired switch for the three position short switch, the ones on the front have white wires going to them. The ones on the top here have green. So that's another orientation. Of course, both the gear and the momentary switch just have two wires. So that's pretty self-explanatory there. So just showing you how these loosen up. You can use a pair of needle nose or what have you. I found that these zip tie cutters Get in there pretty good. Um, of course, I'm not so worried about damaging the nuts as we have new replacements uh, for them. But you definitely don't want to scratch the case if you can help it. So uh, they're not on very tight. It just takes about a quarter turn and then they're completely finger loose at that point. All right, so with all the switches removed now, um, of course, we've got our three position with three wires and then we have our gear switch with the two. Uh, the three position with the white wire, again, will go to the front of the radio. The one with the green wire will go up here on top. Um, if you don't have another transmitter to go back on and look, uh, make sure you take some pictures or something to keep up with the orientation of which switches go where. Uh, thankfully, I have another radio here if I need to reference it, but uh, I pretty much have it memorized at this point. So, uh, at this point, uh, I prefer to do the switches towards the front first uh, to desolder and solder them on and then work my way from the front back up to the back. So we have uh, our front three position here with the white wire and then our long three position right here with the blue wire that will both go towards the front of the radio. So we're going to do those first and get those back in place. Uh, this is where the helping hands really comes in to play uh, to desolder this it's easier just to have something holding the switch and the wiring out uh, from the radio now you will notice from the factory that these connections do have some heat shrink around them i've found on pretty much every radio that i do that just kind of grabbing that heat shrink with your fingernails and pulling back will expose those solder joints it's not on there very tight which is good we don't have to cut it out but uh, so we have the three wires here that we will get desoldered. Uh, be very cautious when soldering around any of the boards or anything Ob for obvious reasons. That's why I like to have these helping hands to kind of hold it out as far out as it will allow. Uh, also be careful not to touch any of the case with your soldering iron or you will be melting some plastic. Okay, again with the orientation thing. So these switches, if you look here, if you have the... Uh, wires facing you on this side of the switch the black will always be in the center and the red will always be on the bottom uh, and then your off color will be on the top so in this case we got blue black and red with the wires facing us uh, so that's just a quick easy way uh, of course in this case we've got a three position long switch so we will go ahead uh, and prep a three position long flat switch out of our kit so that's momentary that's not what we're looking for. Two position, not what we're looking for. Aha, three position. So I like to go ahead and remove the nut, set that off to the side, and I will get a little bit of solder on each one of these legs in preparation to take these wires after desoldering.
All right, so there's our first switch soldered uh, with the wires facing us. We got blue on the top, black in the middle, red on the bottom. Uh, I found that as long as you don't add too much solder, uh, you can get your heat shrink and pull it right back up over those connection points. Um, of course, double check all your solder joints and make sure that you don't have any cold solders or anything that looks kind of odd but that should do us just nicely and rinse and repeat at this point so obviously the switch that we removed here's that keeper I was referring to so the channel here will go towards the outside of the switch and of course it does have a key uh, where it will only go one way to keep that switch from rotating within the housing so that is our three position towards the front with the blue wire so now that that one is completed, we can uh, rinse and repeat for the other three and get these reinstalled. All right, so that's the left side of the radio complete for right now. So we're going to start moving over to the right side of the radio. And once again, we've got all wires facing the inside uh, on the orientation to the switch, except for our momentary switch, which is on the outside there, as you can see. So. All right, so once you're finished soldering all the switches in place, uh, we can go back forward with the reassembly. So just to reiterate, um, all the wires uh, are facing the inside with the exception of, uh, let's see here, this momentary switch here facing outside. So obviously you want your momentary switch to be in the down position. Um, so other than that, all of them, the wires will be facing towards the inside of the radio. So that's a good way to keep up with the orientation. Um, obviously you want to remember which switches go to where, uh, which one had a momentary, which one had three position. Now you, you can change that entirely. If you decide you wanted a momentary over here instead of a three position, you can physically change that switch and then go into the software and change it back over, um, to suit your needs. But we're sticking with the stock layout on this particular radio, um, on your sliders, uh, wires go up you want to push these back into the case here they've got a little channel made into the case specifically for them. obviously we're going to need the back plate and this is where we need to reattach that 900 megahertz antenna that we took off earlier uh, so this is just a push connection so make sure you get it lined up correctly see if you can see in there so there's the 900 antenna Right there at the tip of my thumb so that just pushes down if you wanted to reapply um, some kind of adhesive to try to make sure that stays put you can just make sure it's electrical electronic safe uh, all right so now all we got left after installing the four case screws is to reattach our batter here there is a positive and negative mark but you'll see the retainer goes towards the top there Let's flip the radio around, 
physically looking at the switches, all of them appear to be in the in the slots. Everything just double checking. Everything seems to be lined up appropriately. We have not tightened these down yet. I will do that here momentarily. I want to verify the operation of each switch before doing so. Okay, so in order to check the physical switches, we can go into our system menu. We can go to hardware, switch settings, and here you will see listed all the switches and their functions. Um, so you can check these physically as you're moving them to make sure they're going to the correct position. Uh, it looks like this one's been changed up. Some of the three position switches are set up for two position, which is fine. Uh, but I've there we are, completed uh, FreeSky X20S with all flat switches here. Um, you can order this switch kit from FreeSky North America. I think it's about $30. Uh, definitely a worthy upgrade if you prefer the feel of the flat switches as opposed to the round ones. Uh, fairly tedious. Uh, if you do decide to do it yourself, just be very cautious in doing so. Uh, hopefully this video will help you out if you decide to. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to help you out in any way I can.